Let's take a look at how we can make our skills from last video functional. Alright, so just a heads up for any Unity people out there, if they have uh, commented on the previous video that went up in the middle of the week, uh, I'm recording this beforehand before that video even goes live, so if you guys are looking for c -shirt, uh I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> haven't seen those comments yet, if you have. And if that's the case, then I'll try to continue in with the throwing the C-sharp in starting the following week. But once you, once you get an idea of how C-sharp works, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be hard for you to adapt any GD script code into uh, the C-sharp version. All right, so the skill tree. We had this last time and we were able to click on it. Here we go. Just open this up and we're able to click on it unlock our skills move on to the next one but only when our skills are fully unlocked as you see everything works fine everything still works exactly the same but we have a few changes here all right so all i've got in my world here is i just have my player it's in here with simple left and right movement and i brought my skill tree in and i just stuck it inside of a canvas layer so that my skill tree is always on top now, of course, if you're doing this, it's probably going to be in the canvas layer anywhere, anyways, because that's where the rest of your GUI is going to be. All right. Now, how do we go ahead and go about this? Well, the first thing I did is I went to my skill tree and selecting my root node here, my skill tree uh, that we used last time. I went over to the node section on the right hand side, which is beside the inspector by default. Now, signals will be selected. Uh, by default but i'm going to go into the group section and i'm going to come on in here and i'm going to add in a new group called skill tree and hit the add button and that uh, my skill tree node now has been added into that skill tree group and if you want to make sure <laughs> sorry if you want to make sure you can go ahead and click on manage groups and i know you can't see that right this second i'll go like this and you'll have this little pop up in the middle and you'll see groups skill tree here and on the far right notes in group we should see our skill tree all right so once you have that then you know your skill tree is working or at least in the right group in order to start working and you'll notice i have a script on my skill tree as well but i also edited something on our skill button so if we go to our skill button scene i added an, an, one new variable here for our skill button let me just go back to my inspector and that is a skill name now by default this is going to be empty and it's exported of course um, so that's just here at the top export bar skill name as a string and what we're going to use this is we're going to use this to ask our skill tree hey is this unlocked or what's the current level this is the kind of things that we're going to be using and we're going to be using the skill name that we pass in here each individual skill uh in order to pass in the unlock requirement or pass in the unlock uh notice rather and pass in what our current level is for that skill that way you can then take that information from the skill tree and do whatever it is that you want to do with it so on our skill button here going off here we have a export our variable called skill name string and then we're going to come right down here to where we press our button and we add in two lines of code we're going to get you we use the our creative variable called skill tree and we're just going to get tree and then we're going to use the function get first node in group now our skill tree is going to be the only the only uh node in this group so it's always going to be the first node and here as a string is going to be the name of your group. I just called my skill tree because it makes sense. Now, why am I using a group to get a hold of this node? Well, there are multiple ways that you could do this, and really it's up to you uh, how you want to go about that. You could use parents. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say signals. Um, you could use the unique names. I'm just going about using this group this way just for something different. So if you want to use a different or go ahead and get your skill tree node a different way, you can go ahead and do that. All right. So now that we have that skill tree node, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to call my function set unlock. 
which is one of the functions we're going to create. And I'm going to pass in my skill name and the level. All right, now on that skill tree, I have a variable here, which is a dictionary just called skills. And this is where I'm going to put all my skills. So if I wanted, I could come in here and I would do a fireball, right? That would be a new function called unlock. It would be false by default, of course. And whoops. And the next line would be a level. And the default level, of course, would be zero because it has not been unlocked yet. So it's as simple as I just add a new entry in when you have a new skill. And remember, that's going to correspond with the skill name property. So when you add it into your skill tree here, as I have my first skill here at the bottom, I've gone to my skill name and added dash. So I'd come in, if I want this one to be fireball, I would change the skill name here to be fireball, like so. But really, it's going to be as uh, simple as that when it comes to just adding new skills in. Just change that value in the inspector. Add an entry into your list of skills here. And now set unlock the function that we just called from our skill button. Now that passes in a skill, which is its skill name. Remember, so that's going to be fireball or dash in our example. And we pass in a level. And we're going to check if skill, so if this skill name that we passed in is inside of our list of valid skills. So that's going to make sure that we don't have a typo uh, and cause an error and crash on our game. We're going to say, okay, if this is a valid skill, then we're going to set unlock to true and we're going to adjust its level to whatever it's been passed into us, which we know is never going to go above our max level because we already have that set here from previous video. Now the other function that we have here, I'm going to put a space in there, my own sanity. <laughs> right. And that function that we're going to, other function we're going to use is check skill. And that's just going to have a skill passed into it. It's going to be string. So it's going to be like our skill name. And all it's going to do is it's going to return whether or not it's been unlocked. It's going to give us a true or a false. All right, so how do we use this? Well, we have a left and right simple movement here. Right? So we use the right function here as an example. If, uh, if I press the right arrow key, I'm going to change my adjust my velocity and I'm going to move to the right. Of course, I have else here. So if I'm not pressing any buttons, I stop moving. Now to make this work. And of course, you can make tweaks of this to however you want. Again, I go ahead and grab my skill tree. I'm doing it on ready so I can, I get it uh, after the node is already in the scene and ready and not beforehand and get a null and error out. So what are we doing? Well, I'm, che I'm checking if I'm pressing left. And then I'm, once we're pressing left, if we're not pressing anything else, we're going to go ahead and just move left at our normal speed here. And keep in mind, there's only one way to implement a skill. You can always implement skills in other ways. Um, this way, we're basically coding our skill in. And then based on whether it's unlocked is how we're going to go about it. How we're going to activate it. And it could be other ways. This, but this is the, I would say, simplest way. All right. So if we're pressing left and nothing else, we move left up as normal. We're pressing left. And then we'll check if were in my case I'm pressing the uh, shift key so for me this would be my sprint or my dash key that I set up then we're gonna check since I know this is gonna this is specifically for my dash I'm gonna check the unlock right so variable unlock be a bool and we're gonna get skill tree and call that check skill that we looked at and pass in dash right so Going over that, we're going to click on our skill, which my first skill here has the skill name of dash. When we click on it, it's going to unlock it, right? We're going to set the level to one. So that's going to be the minimum here. And we're going to get our skill tree. We're going to call set unlock, passing the skill name and level. And on our skill name, on our skill tree, that function, it's going to make sure that's a valid skill inside of our game. 
It's gonna set unlock to true, and it's gonna set level to whatever our level is. And then when we hit our sprint button while we're moving left, we're gonna call check skill and pass in the skill that we wanna check with the dash. And that's gonna return our value here, whether or not it's true or false. Uh, if it has not been unlocked, it'd be false. If it has been unlocked and we press the button, it's gonna be true. And we're simply gonna match it, match our unlock if it's true. And of course, you can always write this as an if statement, if unlock equal equal true. You can write it like that as well. Um, so if it's unlock, it's true. Then I'm going to go ahead and get the level for that skill. And now, as you can see, I can set my velocity uh, is equal to my speed. Since I'm going left, it's negative speed uh, multiplied by my level. So this is where I can create my calculations to tweak exactly how I want this to work. Because so obviously you don't want to be going at normal speed of one, then double your speed and then triple your speed. You're probably going to have some kind of calculation in there. So that's not insanely broken as a normal dash um, in this case you might even just have one uh, one level or two levels into it so you'll see here oh, oops that's the skill tree let me go back to my node my world so you see uh, right is normal because we don't have anything in there left is also normal so i'm not hitting shift and now that i'm pressing shift you kind of have to take my word for it um, everything is still working as normal um, because uh, simply because we're, we our unlocks coming back as false so we're not getting any true matches here um, and really we can go in there and set if it's false uh, we can set it back to that as well uh, and the reason uh, you would do that is just because I kind of found a bug here uh, if I'm going right I hold shift and if I hit left I uh, can't actually move left, so easy bug fix, All right, false, let's pass that back in, that should fix that, there you go, so we fixed that uh, little bug as it came up, as it showed its head, but as you see we're going at normal speed even though I'm holding shift, All right, and we unlock our dash, All right, we set it, it's level 1, Nothing's going to change because we're just multiplying our speed by our level. Once we click it again, that goes up to level two. So our speed should now be going at double what it is here. And as soon as I press shift here, here we go. We're going double speed when we go left because we haven't programmed it for right. And you'll see once we go to our final level here, we are now at max three. So we're now moving at three times the speed when we go left and we hold shift. And of course, we can always just let go of shift at any point and return back to normal speed. So you would just do that same setup there. Uh, but when we go right, so if we were to do that, we'd go ahead and check if our input, uh, if we're pressing the shift key. If we are pressing the shift key, we want to get our unlock variable and then based on if that's true or false which i'm just going to use a match statement here if it's true we're going to get the level of that skill and we're going to our velocity is going to be set to speed times level uh, in this case it's going to be positive speed so i'll delete that negative there and if it's false then we'll just move at our normal speed and if back out of there we just have an else block here on the end because if we're not pressing the shift key we're just going to move at our normal speed all right so with that uh, just simply moving that in should now be able to sprint in either direction left right there you go and three times all right so there you go that's how you would go ahead and uh, make your skills work there so for example we could look at a uh, fireball there again okay so if i just come down to uh, my process here and you know what we're we'll go ahead and use do i accept 
uh, for this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and and just copy this down, right? The variable unlock. Uh, in this case, it's going to be my fireball. And we're going to match that unlock in this uh, situation, right? To match unlock if fireball is unlocked. It's true. I'm just going to go ahead and print out fireball chrome. Now, obviously, you would spawn this projectile in and send it flying. And here, say, uh, no fire for you. All right. So if I were to run this, and you see, we hit enter. I'm getting no fire for you. And I don't remember which of these skills is my fireball. I think it's the one on the left here. And of course, I can't unlock that until I get my dash maxed out. And I think this one was my fireball. So if I hit it now, here we go. Fireball thrown being printed out into the console. So as you see, I just added in uh, a button for using my fireball skill, and all I did was add in. You can add an optional button modifier, like we do did with our sprint. But the main, the main thing you, uh, that you need here is right here our unlock line. And then match whether or not it's unlocked. If it is, do this. If not, do this other thing. All right. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can use our skill tree from the previous video and use it to make our skills functional and actually use them within our games. All right. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.